Welcome to Faith, Revival, Holiness, Parish, Church, and Synagogue, a minister in Prophet M.G. Mays. Let us begin in prayer. Let's give a little reverency to our Father and Yeshua. Thank you, Yeshua, for the Father. Thank you, Father. You, you, you allowed your spirit to come in the flesh 2,000 years ago and become a baby boy. Beautiful baby boy. All the women say, oh, I wish it was there. I know. And we, us men, we always want him when he's growing up a little more, you know, when he, when he's breaking in the 20s. But we thank you, Yeshua, for everything you did. And, we, and, and for going on that cross, living a life that shows us how to live the Torah, how to live the prophets, for your, the way you lived it. You showed us how to live those things. You showed us how to live what really what uh, David was talking in the Psalms, down to everything else written in the New Testament. You, you showed us how to live these things. So through you, for your, who you are as the Spirit of God. Amen. A lot of the people, they keep you on the cross or they keep you as, as in the flesh, but they don't. They don't keep. They don't recognize for who you really are, Yeshua. They know you're the Savior, but they don't recognize who you really are. It's the Spirit of God, who you were before, and how you were describing your own self when you said you were there with David, you were there with Joseph, you were there with Moses, you were given the Ten Commandments to to him. All these things. You were the one giving it to him. You were basically, and you said you were with the Father in the beginning. What was with the Father in the beginning that the Old Testament says? The Spirit of God. What is he really claiming he really is? The Spirit of God. And you're totally missing out on a blessing. And Satan doesn't want the church and the synagogue parish to know who Yeshua really is. He's the Spirit of God. He dwells with us personally. And you... you all you that say, oh, I wish I could be with Yeshua, he, he is with you. And every time you say that, you hurt him. You're hurting Yeshua because he can be with you now. This other things of the millennial reign is more formal, okay? That's more of a formal thing. But he's with you now. He is the king of kings now, but he will be the king in the millennial reign. Do you understand? And he'll have things underneath him naturally. Amen. So we thank you, Yeshua. We acknowledge you as the Spirit of God. And I and I and perhaps of the church, the synagogue parish, they're sorry for not this is such a great blessing you don't even know. To know who Yeshua real is, and then to know who the Father God is. This is important. This is the third part of faith. Believing, trusting, and knowing. When you got the knowing part going on, you got you got the power house of faith going on. And you know what? That faith is never going to let you down. When you believe and trust in Yeshua and the Father God, but when you know them, there's some faith going going to happen, and the devils of hell are going to run away from you because you got the powerful faith of the our Elohim and our our, our Ruch HaKadosh Mashiach on your side. Amen. So we thank you, Father. We thank you, Shua. We we're so excited. Amen. Every day, even though we're hurting, even though we're having problems. We know it's not your fault that we have problems. It's because we live in a, on a, a life of, of, of problems in this world. And we just have to trust we have to believe and we have to know that knowing is a very important part of the faith, part of the equaling faith, what a faith is, and it's a substance of things hopeful and all the other things that come from that. But we gotta we gotta break faith down so we can understand what faith really is, and then we can go forth in faith. Then we can go forth in the substance of not seeing and all that beautiful things that the Word of God says on that. Amen. Throughout Genesis and Revelation. Amen. So we're gonna read on the Torah today. Torah, which means the good teaching, but it also means the law. And and when you talk about the law of God, you should not cower down and say, "Oh man, I'm scared." No, don't be scared. Be ready to learn. The laws of God protect you from the laws of man that are not right and woman. 
Amen. So it's the Torah Shemot, Amen, names, the book of names, Chai, sometimes C-H-A-Y they got here, but sometimes it's C-H-A-I. I, I prefer it that way, um, but there's a little bit difference in the meaning. But it comes out to life. Amen. We're going to talk about life. Amen. Because we all have a life. And God God wants to teach us about a little bit of life here. Amen. There's a lot of things we can learn about that. But this study is about life. You'll see. Exodus, which is Shemot, names, book of names, 30. Of, of, we're going to start at uh, verse 11 to 37. Going to 31 of 1 through 18, 1 through 18 of 31 chapter of 11 to 37 of chapter 30 of, of the book of names, Exodus, Shemot. Amen. All righty there. Are we ready? Someone said, all right. All right, here we go. Yah said to Moshe, when you take the census of the people of Israel, and register them, each upon restoration, is to pay a ransom for his life to Yah, to avoid a, a break out of plagues among them during the time of the census. See, Yeshua took the gap of that right there, because they had to do that um, so that the Father God had the fullness of saying to Satan or anything, that evil spirit saying, oh, I want, I want to give them plagues and all that. They couldn't because they were under that 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 blessing they gave. They they off they gave their offering to the Father, and so that offering hovered over them in protection. Now we have Yeshua, but we should still give offerings and tithes and gifts to one another and all that. That's important. But it's not in this way where you, if you don't do it, you're going to get in trouble. Not from God, but from, from these evil things that plagued everything. Amen. So God always had a way, even when it was a little bit harder in, in these those days. So we should really, uh, really appreciate where we're at right now and how it's a lot easier that our brothers and sisters way back had it. Amen. It's really important to, to, to give a little honor and fact and thanking God for where we're at and how it's a lot easier for us. And he also feel kind of, everybody should feel like, wow, I feel a little bad for them back then. But they, they still did good. So how much good, more good should we be doing right now? Amen. For what Yeshua has done, or the Spirit of God, or Hashem Spirit, Yeshua. And everyone subject to the census may pay an offering to you half a shackle, one fifth of an ounce of silver. They were using the real stuff those days. By the standard of the sanctuary shackle. So there's a sanctuary shackle, and there's this everyday one. Because it's really showing there. So here's a, let's get with the program. There's a, there's a heavenly one you use for things like that, and, there, and there's a one that's just an everyday street shackle. Sh shackle, sorry. Um, the shackle equaling 20 uh, gurneys. We, um, boy, I didn't really prepare for what the gurney is. Um, it's probably probably a half of, of the measurement we do, and then you add two of those. That's that's the best. Um, we just don't use that kind of measurement anymore as much. Maybe they do. Some people do. Um, I've never heard anybody use it lately in modern times, you know. And everyone over the 20 years of age who is subject to the census is to give a half a shackle when given to Yah's offering to atone for their life. So they, this was atoning for their life so that the Father God and through the Spirit of God, Yeshua, could, because he didn't die on the cross, he wasn't, there, there's, there's still Satan can really take a hold on 
and earthen people. So this is how the Father God and Shua made sure that the people were protected from Satan trying to do something evil, you know, um, to them, you know, basically. Because Satan's a real ravenous dog that needs to be put down. I mean, he's one of those dogs that will bite anything, destroy your hand. That's kind of a dog that that Satan is. And he needs to be put down, you know, a ravenous dog, you know. Man-eater dog. That's what Satan is. we got to put him down. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry. Don't worry. Amen. We have dominion over Satan. That's what the Bible says. But too long, too many times, people are scared of Satan instead of Satan being scared of you. You are in the image of the Father and Yeshua. So get with the program. God's giving you the keys of the kingdom back to mankind that Satan stole from Adam and Eve. But we got to start operating in that authority that God has given us all. Amen. Satan doesn't have it. We have it. So we better start acting like it because he's still in, he's still killing and destroying our brothers and sisters across this world. And we, we need to say no more. No. Get out of here, Satan. Get out of this planet. Get out of the moon. Go to Jupiter and the melt or whatever. Amen. We need, to, we need to get bold like that. We need to stop being afraid of Satan. He needs to be afraid of us. How many times does the Father have to speak that way through me? Because he's saying it's time to stop being afraid of Satan. And Satan needs to be afraid of us. Amen. There, okay, so it's uh, 14. It says, everyone over the 20 years old of age, who is, is subject to the senses to give a half a shekel when giving to Yah's offering, a, a, a atonement for their lives. You are to take the atonement money from the people of Israel and use it to for the service of the tent a meeting so that it will be a reminder to the people of Israel before Yah atoning for your lives. Amen. So it needs that 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 gathering of money needs to go something for remembrance, a visual remembrance that he atoned for you, even though it, it, it had to go through money, but it's it's not as it wasn't as good as what, what Yeshua did on the cross. You gotta understand that, you know. But this that atonement, that vision of the Ten of Meetings represents Yeshua. That represents what he did, what he's going to do, what he did for us all at that particular time. Amen. It's important to remember that. Amen. The, the rich is not to give more or, or the poor less than a half a shackle when given to you as offering to tone for your lives. So God said, you're really rich or poor, you're all going to get the same amount. Because he, he, he doesn't believe in communism and socialism. God hates that stuff. It hurts and kills many people. Look at Venezuela, how it is. Look at how some of the inner cities of America are now. Thanks to the, the authorities that want to, to have socialism and communism over the people. It destroy lives. God says no. He treats everybody fairly. Amen. God doesn't want people to be poor either. He wants he, he wants people to be a middle class mindset. Middle class. He wants everybody middle class. Be meek. Middle class. Amen. You are to take the atonement money from the people of Israel and use it for service for the tent of meeting so that it will be a reminder for the people of Israel before you to atone for your life. So a visual of, of what that's going for, that, that atonement shackle. You're seeing that's your atonement. That is a vision going forward to what he did on the cross. Amen. Now some of you you might have a hard time with that. So my Jewish, my family, that uh, is a little stickler. You know what? Let Yeshua, the Spirit of God, reveal himself today. 
I pray he does. I love all of you. you got, there's a lot of uh, different opinions I'm working with today and every day. But that's fine. I like it. Paul liked it too. He, he dealt with a lot of different kinds of individuals. So do Yeshua. Yah said to Moshe, you are to make a basin of bronze. Bronze means atonement. And again, atonement. Life. Atonement. atonement. With the base of the bronze for washing. Water means purity. Cleansing. You know, uh, removing dirt and removing things that could harm your body if you don't remove it, you know, 10 minutes. Place it between the tent of meetings and the altar and put water on it. Aaron, Aaron and his sons will wash their hands and feet there. So God wants us to wash our hands and feet. And if you look into the medical uh, industry about washing hands and feet, they actually recommend that because it, it it's better to wash your hands before a meal, right? And then if you're in a certain areas where you wear sandals and you don't wear shoes, you got to wash those feet too. Because the if you cleanse the, your hands and your feet, you're gonna you're not gonna have those germs on you, right? And you're gonna so you're gonna do a lot better. So that's why they God wants. Aaron and his sons to clean their hands and feet. But for medical reasons, it's really good for everybody to cleanse their hands before they're going somewhere, you know, and our, our, our even feet, if you wear sandals a lot, or something with open toe, you want to keep those feet clean too. But if you have boots there, you have no problem there. But, you know, when you take a shower, you always wash that area anyway. So again, God knows best, you know, on these things, is those saying. And, you know, and I want to bring that out of that medical, because there's a lot of medical things here. There really is. The Torah has a lot about health, both physical and spiritually, and a lot of, about your health of your emotional state um, throughout the Torah. And it's very important we... Give that moment a time. Say, this is what saying here, and and recognize it from today's society of how we're doing it today. So we can say, wow, that is really important. We better make sure we do wash our hands in the important times when we're shaking hands or we're um, ready to eat. We gotta wash our hands, you know. And the the kids have the sandals. They gotta wash their feet too, you know. You know and don't tread the mud in there, you know, and all that stuff. Kids, you're gonna you're gonna make your mom ha unhappy, you know. Put that in there, but that's the truth. And all the women, folks that are mothers, said amen on that. So they will wash with water, so that they will not die. So because there's diseases. When you wash your hands, you you take those things off your hands, so you're cleansed, you're cleaned, so you can eat and you can you can even use your fingers, finger food and all. You don't want to do that when you're not cleanse your hands first, right? And all the grandmas say, "Yep, I've been telling my family for years, just make sure to clean our hands." And all that, you know. Uh, verse 21. They are to wash their hands and feet so that they will not die. And then this is the perennial laws for them through all generations. So it's through all generations. It's a good thing for us to, to, to do. Amen. Yes, said to Moshe, take the best spices, 500 shackles of myrrh. So myrrh, you know. Uh, 12 and a half pounds, a half of this amount, 250 shackles of ar aromic cinnamon. So this is the real expensive cinnamon. Uh, six and a, and a fourth pound, uh, 250 shackles of aromic cane, which I believe is cane is sugar, sugar cane. They say cane, aromic cane. 500 shackles of cassa, and you know, and a lot of people that are Latin, Latin Jewish, 
people know and 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 people even from the Middle East they we all that, that's a beautiful spice. Um, use in the sanctuary standards, you know, C A S S I A. Okay, so I said it wrong. Okay, there we go. And one gallon of olive oil. So you put all this stuff together and make them into a holy anointing oil. So you want a, no, a holy anointing oil. You, you, you know, let's get the myrrh. Let's get, uh, get some uh, uh, good sugar. I mean, uh, you know, uh, cinnamon and, and cane of sugar and cassia. Put all that together with olive oil, okay? And that's a, a temple olive oil, anointing oil. And you know what? It's good. If it's good then, it's going to be really good even more. Amen. For anointing people and anointing things and, and praying over the people and praying over the sick so that they feel better or they recover. It's up to God, but we, we, we need to do our best. Amen. And make them into a holy anointing oil. Blend it into a perfume. It, it, is, it would be ex excellent perfume makers. And it will be a holy anointing oil. Use it to anoint the tent of meeting, the ark of the testimony, the, the temple and all the utensils, the men men menorah, and all the utensils, the in, in, in the increasing of the altar, the altar from the, the burnt offerings, and all the utensils, a basin with its base, you are to consecrate them. They will be especially holy. So they're especially holy when you use this anointing oil. So I would get going, you, you priests and ministers, on this stuff here. You know, let's, let's make a special holy, shall we? All right, amen. And whatever touches them will be holy. So, you know, this anointing oil mix is very holy. Amen. And they are uh, to anoint Aaron and his sons. You are to consecrate them to serve in the office of Kohim, the priest. Tell the people of Israel, this is a holy anointing oil. For th through all generations, that means this is supposed to be done. This anointing oil is supposed to be made for all generations. So I would get going, Israel, churches and synagogues, parishes, holy mosques, temples of God that love Yeshua. You better get going with this anointing oil. It says through all generations, just read that again. Tell the people of Israel, this is the holy anointing oil for me through all generations. Who is the me? That's Yeshua, the Messiah. That's the me, the Shaddai there. It, it, it is not to be used to anointing the people's body. You are to, I got to turn the page here, page 60. Well, 96 on mine. Not to make any light of it. So if you're just doing it to do it, and it's and it's not it's not in a holy way anointing people. You're not supposed to do it. You're supposed to do it because you want to see people feel bad. So you anoint them with this anointing oil, this this special mixture, and it's not hard to get this stuff. So you can do it. It's best to do it fresh. And, and, and anoint it, get get the music going, put it by a speaker for hours and just saturate it in worship. And I tell you what, that, when you pick that up later, the angels and everything are going to anoint that and all that. It's, it's going to be so powerful. But man, I tell you what, it's going to be so powerful and beautiful for people's lives. Amen. That's how I usually do anointing oil. I, I, I need to try to get this stuff to myself. But when I do anointed oil, I set it aside, I, let, I put it by a speaker and, and, and get the anointing of, of worship on there for hours and I pray over it, you pray over it. And so, cause you want, you want as much anointing in there so it can 
break a yoke of bondage over people's lives that are hurting you. You want your brothers and sisters to feel better, right? So you, you try to do your best as ministers, don't you? And priests, amen. And rabbis, all right, you rabbis, amen. Hallelujah. And is the holy, and you are to treat it holy. Amen. God's stuff, you got to treat holy. Whoever makes any light in it, use it on an unauthorized person to, to be cut off from the people. The meaning, you do, you just you do it because you want to do it, and, and, and you don't keep it in a holy state, then, boy, you could be in trouble for that. By the Father God. Yah said to Moshe, take the, the aroma plant and to do it. Um, uh, and the, the basin of resin, sweet aromatic root, bitter uh, gum, gum, these spices along with frankincense, all equaling in, in quantity, that's so each of these things in, in equal quantity, and make an incense. So that you're supposed to make an incense with this. That, you know, if you want to have an incense for your the church, synagogue, parish, well, you got to, you want it to be a really extra hoy type incense. You uh, get these ingredients, and you you put it together. There's a way to to make incense, the homemade incense with it, uh, or even get someone that can do that. That that it, because there's always someone. It knows how to do something. Maybe you don't know, but you can learn from them. Amen. And that's important to learn from one another so that we can increase our talents and quality of life for others by uh, learning that new trait. Amen. It's important to learn things. And make incense and blend into a perfume as you would expect it, a perfume maker. Salt, pure, and holy. You are to uh, grind up from it a very fine and put it in front of the testimony in the ten of meetings where I will meet with you. Who's the one that's meeting with you? You know, if it says God, I will say God. This is who will meet with you. It's referring to the Spirit of God here, which is Yeshua, again, our El Shaddai. It's going to meet with them and He's always been around. It's always in the Old and New Testament both. You need to start recognizing these things. Open It opens a new perspective from the Old and New Testament when you think about it. Amen. And it's true. Amen. Whoever makes up any like perfume, this would be cut off. So they 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 make it wrongly and, and they, they're go in there it's cocky and say oh this is this is good enough well you know what god thought it was good enough when he he sent his spirit into the flesh and died on the cross and paid a whole bunch of a hurt for you got whipped beard plucked all kinds of things so and and so these people that say oh that's good enough and you know, only halfway when he did all that for you, you could do at least the best you ability every day for your fellow men and women and children, sometimes animals too. Amen. Counts on the situation, right? Yes, said to Moshe, I have single out about Tazel, the son of Yo, the son of Hur, the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the Spirit of God, which is Yeshua El Shaddai, with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Recognize that. Concentrated every kind of artistry. So artistry, so wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and artistry. And, and he is to make of a design of gold, silver, bronze, Cutting precious stones to be set, wood carving, and every craft. Do you notice how he picks this guy? 
Amen. This guy, it doesn't say this guy has his talent either. And and the Father anoints this gentleman in the Bible with the Spirit of God, which is Yeshua, El Shaddai, and gives them wisdom, understand, knowledge, and artisan. And in, in the first place, you, you can feel and sense through that this guy probably doesn't know how to do this, but now he does because the anointing of God is on him. To understand those things and a lot of this stuff we just don't understand correctly but you can know nothing and God can give you something you didn't know but a lot of the churches in synagogue and parish don't understand the power of God Almighty in the Spirit of God Yeshua when he goes on a person you can know something you didn't know amen and this is this is uh, the, the church is really Stone Age, for what the Bible really says, it's yours in the parish, in the synagogue. Get out of the Stone Age churches and synagogue and parish and get in to the blessings of God. He will teach you things you do not know and you'll know them. Just like this gentleman here. Amen. And he is the master in designs of gold, silver, bronze. The gold is is uh, is is representing holiness. Silver represents in redemption, and bronze is is uh, the cleansing and redemp full redemption, going to the big cleansing. Silver, gold, fully operation in God's holiness. All these things represent something. They really do. Cut uh, uh, precious stones to be set, wood carvings, and every other craft. I have also appointed to assist all, all Holly of Halavim, the son of uh, Samuel of the tribe of Dan. Moreover, I, I will endow all the craftsmen. So he says that I will endow. If God has to endow you with something, that means you didn't have it. This is all, this concept that God can give you something you didn't know how to do is foreign now in the churches and synagogues because you, you, you're you so much in your, wrapped in your traditions of men and women that you want to you want to get all mad at me so I'll, whatever you want but if you want if you want to go past that and see what the bible is really saying and clear cut and how god can give you gifts you didn't even have but you got to get rid of those traditions of men and women get the traditions of the word of god but it's different than the traditions that you passed on family to family, church to church, synagogue to synagogue, parents, got to get rid of all that. And you realize that there's a blinder over your eyes, so you, you can't really see the fullness of what the Word of God has for you. But you well know. I have faith in you. I have faith in each of you. That you you're going to get rid of those traditions of men and women, and you're going to, and, and, and mysticism and paganism that you didn't realize was there and get rid of all of that and really get in the word of God for the first time with no blinders and see that God wants to give you something today that you didn't have just like he gave something to these two wonderful men of God amen he'll do it the same yesterday today and forevermore amen I will endow all the craftsmen with the wisdom to make everything I have ordered. Whose order for, is Yeshua, Hamashiach, right here, our Shaddai, ordering the, anointing them through, through the Father, coming down, anointing them. Amen. He's going to anoint, anoint you to help you with your, your business, you, to, to help you with your children, to help you with figuring out what you need to do at your workplace, figuring out how to save some money at the store, whatever. Amen. God says he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What he's done before, he'll do again. Amen. The intent of meaning of the Ark of the Testament and the, the Ark covering above it. 
and all the furnishing of the tent, the tabernacle and the utensils and the pure uh, it, it tensos and the uh, no the pure menorah sorry and all the utensils and the and the crease of the altar the altar burning offerings and all of its utensils and the basin of its base, amen. So I mean God you know why God anointed these men and it, it's important or it could be, it could have been a woman, um, but He anointed them because He He saw something special in them. They didn't know what to do out of this, but when God anointed them through the El Shaddai, Yeshua, they knew how to do these things. He anointed them because they had special qualities that made them special to the Father and Yeshua because they had qualities that were good inside. They, they, they had love, they they were they they sensitivities and and things that made them qualify for God, giving them the understanding how to make things, because these two men did not know how to do any of that, but they did after the Spirit of God went on them. They knew how to do those things. This is authority and power that God wants to restore to the synagogue, the parish, and the synagogue churches. And your homes today, Amen. Remember, he's no specter person. If if you have a good heart like these two men, be prepared for greatness that God has for you, Amen. So you could go to a, a machinery at work. You don't know how to do it. Well, you know you need to pray ahead of time and say, "Show me how to do this. Anoint me, just like you anointed others in the Bible." And he's going to. You're going to go to work, and they're going to marvel at how good you're going to do on that. And don't get cocky. Don't get prideful in yourself. You can have pride in other people, but don't have pride in yourself. That's the sinful pride. When you have pride in yourself, that's sinful. But when you have pride for others, that is good. That's real good to have be proud of others, what they're accomplishing. But when you have pride in your own life, that's bad. That's what Satan fell from. You don't want to do the same problem he had. You want to make Satan sad, not happy, right? And the anointing oil, amen, the anointing oil. See, the garments, the, the offering, the holy Gar, uh, garments for uh, Aaron and the the Kohen, the priest, the garments of his son, so that they can serve an official Kohen's priest, and the anointing oil increase the aromatic spice of holy place, and they are to make everything just as I have ordered. Yeshua has ordered this, or how should I, in this particular time, and then in the New Testament known as Shua. Yah said to Moshe, tell the people of Israel to order, order to observe the Sabbath. That's the seventh day, not the first day, the seventh day. For this is a sign between me and you, all generations, so that you will know that I am Yah. And the completion of I am is, I am that he is. The is, the is, is Yeshua or and I am there is I am is is the Father. Amen. I am them that it is that is. And that's the completion of both of them together. So you know. And who sets you apart for me? Sits apart for who? Who's the me part? It's God said, but you know, this is the coming, the me is coming. That's Yeshua, that's El Shaddai, amen, that's the, the covenant. Therefore you are to keep my Sabbath. You're supposed to keep the seventh day, churches. Do you? No, you don't. You're liars. He doesn't, you can do Sunday if you want, but that's not the seventh day. You can't make the first day the seventh day. That's a sin. And you have to, you have to, you have to work it out on your own life why you did that way. There's the seventh day is the seventh day. 
Don't try to make Sunday the seventh day when it's not. It's the first day. It says for six days you can labor. That's Sunday through Friday. But on the seventh day, it's holy before God. Because it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a holy day that represents what is the millennial reign is going to be like. Of resting on that day. Uh, you know, there's no rest for the preachers. But that's all right. You, you can. Uh, you know, there's people that have to do things, okay? Common sense. But for the most part, you're supposed to honor that as a special day where you're not going to work. You can work Sunday through Friday, but on the seventh day, you're supposed to rest from working type of work. There's work to do be done, yes. I mean, you got to cook. You got to keep the house clean. Those are different things than... This be common sense here. Then you got to get gas. So there's going to be people. They're going to have to do the work, but they're, they're but they'll be they'll be there. Uh, there's things in the Torah that allows that, because there has to be some people in the modern world. They have you have to get the gas right to go get your son, your daughter, your your wife, your brother, your sister. So they have to have someone there. But if they acknowledge the Sabbath within what they have to do, God will bless them. Because there, there are, you need people in the hospital, right? On Saturday, not as much, but enough to cover in case someone is injured. Amen. This is common sense. The, the Bible hits on these things. But for the most part, if you can get it off, you're supposed to acknowledge it with all your heart. But if you can't, and you're one of those emergency type situations to help others, well, God will bless you through that. And, and just acknowledge that day. It's very important. That's the most important thing on, on this day of the Sabbath is to acknowledge it. To acknowledge that day. Keep it holy the best you can. I know it's physically hard to do that, but with your spirit and your soul, you can. Remember that. God bless. Let's continue. Aaron and the Kohims and the, the garments of his sons, so that they can serve in the official of the Kohims, priests, the, anoint, the anointing oil, increase the uh, Arabic spice for the holy place. That's the holy place is Yeshua. The, the special holy place, or the holy of holies, is the Father God. The holy place, and they are to make everything just as I have ordered. Amen. How should I is ordering? Say, yes, sir. Right? Yeah, and then it goes back to the Father God here. Yah said to Moshe, tell the people of Israel, you are to exert my Shabbat, Sabbath, for this sign between me and you, all generations, it's a sign between God and us. And what he wants to do in the millennial reign. I mean, this is this is this is this is a holy holiday, okay? That we have every seventh the seventh day of every seventh day, and it's a very it's the most special of all of them. And you didn't even know it, but you know it now, because it represents what he's going to do in the millennial reign. Amen. The, the, the messianic millennial reign. A lot of you. Call it that. That's fine. That's a good way of expressing it. It's a holy, special holy time. It's away from sadness to operating in what God has really called us to do throughout eternity. But we're going to have earthly uh, children that are under the age of 12, so they will be given a chance. And as you know, some rebel. I mean, in a good society, there's some that rebel. I mean, wow. But that happens. You know, and you can see it through, you know, the Amish raise their kids right, and then they still, you know, do what they do. You know, that's a good example right there for some people. Amen. Therefore, you are to keep the Shabbat, the Sabbath, between, because it is set apart for you. Set apart for, who's the you part? Yeshua, Amashia, which is, El Shaddai. Everyone who treats it 
ordinary must be put to death. God is really serious about us keeping the Sabbath. You, you pastors are liars. You need to keep the Sabbath. Stop going by what the Vatican wants. Is the Vatican your God? Because they, they are the ones that changed it from the seventh day, the first day. You can find some of the fake popes of that day, one that wrote and says he acknowledges that God's Sabbath, but he says he, he took authority over what the Bible says and said he's going to make it the first day. So when you celebrate the first day as the Sabbath, you're, you're, you're celebrating what the Antichrist wants. I don't care. It's true. You can have that as another day to gather, but don't call it the seventh day. The seventh day is Saturday, not the first day. You can have that as another day to preach, sure. But the people who need all they can help, they, they can help them. Amen? Because it is set apart for you. Anyone who treats the order as an ordinary must be put to death. For whoever does, does any work on it should be cut off from the, the people. On, the, on six days, work will be done. But on the seventh day is the Shabbat, the seventh day. For, for a complete rest, I mean, from doing regular work and having a little fun, be with the family, um, get maybe get something done you wanted to do, mow, 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 mow the grass, sorry guys, um, uh, you know, things that need to be done, you know, kiss your wife a little bit more than you normally do because you run out of the door, you got a little extra time so you can give, do the smooch smooch and all that good stuff, children, come your ears, thank you. All right, but that's, you know what I'm saying? Okay, let's go on now. All righty there. Whoever does not work, who, whoever does any work on the day of the Sabbath must be put to death. The people of Israel, and it's everybody is part of Israel. Your stench of Israel, Zion, is the stench of Israel. That's the born again. So it's, it's everybody, pretty much are to keep the Shabbat. You're supposed to keep the Shabbat. Churches, synagogues, parishes, born again mosques, temples of God. Are you listening to me? Keep the Shabbat. Keep the seventh day. Exerb it with all your heart. Amen. It is a sign between me and the people of Israel forever. And Zion is part of Israel. You keep out of Israel, you're part of Israel, the born again, the church, synagogue, parish, born, born again mosque that love Yeshua in temples of God. All of you are supposed to observe this. Every one of you. Amen. Okay. So the people are supposed to observe the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath through all the generations as a parental covenant. It is to be a sign between me and the people forever for the six days. Yah has made heaven and earth, but on the seventh day, he stopped the work for rest. If it was good enough for Father God, it should be good enough for you, you churches and synagogue and parishes. And if you don't think so, well, you know, it's between you and God on that. But I wouldn't I would do that kind of thing. That's, that's not nice. To, to be ugly to, to God, what he's trying to say here. He loves you. He rested on the seventh day, the Father, God of eternity, and then Yeshua brought forth the blessing of what that is. Through the scripture, that's El Shaddai, in the Old Testament, and Yeshua is the New Testament, and the great giver in, in the furtherment of, of the millennial reign, of what, whatever the, the, the name of that. But it's the name will represent as the great giver because he's going to show he's going to show that part of himself issue well or else should i amen and the last but least it says then he finished saying with moshe on the mount sinai nine and yah gave him two tablets of testimony 
a stone inscribed in the finger of our Father God. Amen. Hallelujah. God loves your life, and he's got some life to give you more today. Amen. Father, I pray for everybody. I thank him for, for everybody that, that stayed through this and listening to this, that there'll be extra blessing be upon them right now. Extra blessing be with them right now. And I thank you, Father, that, that their burdens will be lighter their, and, and they'll know that you love them, Father. And, and, and the Spirit of God, our beautiful Daddy of Salvation, Yeshua, you love them as well. Our Yahweh loves you. And I bless you and all blessings of Yahweh, which is Yah and Yeshua, to you now. In the name of Yeshua, the Father God. Now, I want you of you that are not saved and spirit filled you might be you might be saved but if you're not spirit filled pray the spirit too because you want to be the wise versions that were born again and spirit filled because the unwise versions were just born again not spirit filled you must be born again and spirit filled that's the wise version were born again and spirit filled the unwise versions were born again but not spirit filled so they didn't know when when they were called to go over here and there and then the father god directly called to them they did not come and then and then it goes into the, the the wick of the candle and the oil and how the oil they they didn't give it they didn't get more oil the anointing oil is the word of god the anointing oil is is the the healing of the relationship you have that's the oil the wick is trimmed through the word of of, of god that 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 you're and so the oil needs to be full you need to have the fullness of relationship and the word of god and the the understandings of the word of god the wick trim correctly so when it burns it won't burn you and it'll be correct and everything and having extra oil extra of the the word of god relationship brings them forward to doing what god has called them each to do but the unwise version they didn't have a, a oil enough oil they just had a little bit of the word of god a little bit of relationship it was more tradition than anything that they they thought was the same, but it wasn't. Plus, they weren't spirit-filled. So they weren't ready for anything that God had for them. Amen? Because you, you, just like the, the Ark of the Covenant had the fullness of the Spirit of God in it, and representing the, the born-again man or woman of today, it's the Ark of the Covenant. Amen? And going forth in... And the anointing is is being like a Abraham and his Sarah. We were all like like Adam and Eve, but when you're born again, you become like an Abraham and Sarah. Still have mistakes, but you you're going for, forth in an anointing, like they did. Amen. And in being filled up as the Ark of Covenant is filled up with the Spirit of God, be filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. So. Pray this prayer and get saved and spirit filled right now. Father God, pray this prayer. Father God, I thank you for Yeshua. Thank you, Yeshua, for Father God. Thank you for being obedient and, and, and going in that earth suit that you did. Thank you, Yeshua. I, I accept you as my Savior. Say that. I accept you as my Savior today. Say that. I thank you for forgiveness of my sins. Say that right more, one more time, my brothers and sisters. I, I thank you for forgiveness of my sins, forgiveness of, of my of things that I couldn't help. Thank you, Shu, for forgiving me. Thank you for being my Savior. Pray this prayer. Thank you for being my Savior. Thank you for being my King. Thank you for being the priest of priests. Thank you, Father God, for Yeshua. Thank you, Yeshua, that right now that I'm born again. Say that. Thank you, Yeshua, I'm born again right now. Because what you did on the cross, on the third day rose from the dead. Thank you, Yeshua. I'm born again. And I'm spirit filled with your spirit, Yeshua, right now. I accept you in my life, Yeshua. Thank you I, that I'm born again and spirit filled right now. Amen. Congratulations. Welcome to the family of God, my friends. Love you.
You're so wonderful. God's got a plan for you. He's, he's, he, all the angels are excited. We don't express the excitement of a person getting spirit-filled and born again. In some cases, a born again that ain't getting spirit-filled. Well, that too. And then, you know, you got to get baptized. You know, when you got a when you got a raw flesh, do you walk away from that? Don't you lay that card down? You, you're kind of clever, you know, and because you you know you got something good, and maybe you get a little extra out of it, you know, from you know, and and so you, you play that hand, you play it right. Well, that's the same thing with baptism. You you know what? They're gonna they're gonna have you. They're gonna dunk you, of course. They, it represents that you are really going all the way. Just like a royal flush. You, you, you're not going to leave that hand. You got a good hand. Well, and you got you got the best hand of all, salvation. And, and, the, and, bapt, and then spirit filled, so you baptize as a celebration as sin. I'm dying out to all that sin or whatever it could be. I'm dying out to that. I raise it up as that new believer, that new creature, and and the Messiah today. Amen. That's the royal flush. You you you're laying the cards out. You're getting baptized. You're laying the cards out. You see that a little bit of symbolization there. Amen. Yeshua liked us to do that. You know, He showed those things for us to continue that way of understanding. Amen. And a lot of people, no, you don't leave a royal flush, Ham. You got it, right? You got to play it. Well, you're going to do the same thing about baptism. Amen. Because God loves you. I love you. I'm willing to lay my life down to, to bring these things to you. Even if it was my last breath, I would do this for you. Because I love you. I'm not. Nobody's perfect how they do things. God's not looking for perfect. He's looking for a yielded vessel. So are you willing to be a yielded vessel to, let, to be spirit-filled with Yeshua today, our Yeshua Jesus, the, our El Shaddai, great giver? Be spirit-filled today and, and go forth and bless your fellow brothers and sisters wherever God is, leads you to do. God bless. Let me pray for you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Hodas brings peace. The past is on ascending. None seven, none broken. Complete peace be with you. I love you. Stay strong. I love you. Be bright with God. Don't go by traditions anymore. Go by love, loving, and relationship. Learn the Bible and relationship with Yeshua. He loves you. Allow the Spirit of God to show you the Bible, not in tr tradition of what you have learned and what you covered, but what is really there. Amen. Could traditions blind you from knowing all what's there? Or you know it or not? There's traditions of the Bible, which most people don't go and do, which they should. And there's traditions of men and women, mysticism and paganism, all mixed together in there. You need to get rid of all that. I say that in love. And you need to work on that. You can do it. Don't feel bad about it. Say it wants you to feel always bad and say you don't do anything about it. And see, that's what's happened to a lot of you ministers. You feel bad about what's going on in your church and you want to fix it, but you feel bad and you keep on doing that instead of letting Yeshua take that to the next step, the Spirit of God and, and Hashem taking that next step with the Father and fix it by faith. Love on the people. Say, hey, we're going to do things differently, and it's going to be uncomfortable, but it's going to be, we're going to be okay. That's why God's give you a little humor. You know, we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. You hear me? <laughs> you know, you're going to say it that way. We're going to be all right. We're going to go by relationship and not tradition anymore in this church, this parish synagogue. We're going to we're going to allow the spirit of Jesus in our churches, in synagogue parishes, which is the spirit of Rukadash. We're going to allow him in. 
We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna recognize what he did physically and on the cross, but we're not going to keep him on the cross. We're not going to keep him on that earth suit that he had temporary. Because it says in flesh and blood, that, that's temporary. We've got to focus on what he is eternally. It's the Spirit of God that we have not done and we sinned ministers by not understanding this. You know, I'm willing to lay my life down, everything of who I am, to tell you this is the truth. Yeshua is the Spirit of God. And we have focused him on the cross or in the earth suit, but we have not focused on what he was trying to say all along. The Gospels and Paul and Isaiah and everybody wrote about him. They learned. He taught everybody. He's beautiful. He wants to bless us. We let him. See, we got to stop arguing with the Spirit of God, which is Yeshua and the Father. We've got to let them work in our life. Because what kind of a blessing will we be for our fellow brothers and sisters and children? Children need good adults that is willing to give a little time and say, yeah, and, and to humble and to be part of their life and bless the children and bless the uh, their fellow men and women and, and even sometimes animals, you know. I mean, you know, those situations too occur. God bless. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Honest brings peace to passes on your standing. I love you. Keep in there. It's okay. It's going to be all right. We don't know when our times are up, but so that's why we better do the best every day we got. Okay? That's the truth. We, we shouldn't be always worried, oh, we're going to die. Or, no. You should be more worried what, what we're doing with our time every day and leaving a legacy for others the best we can. We all are a legacy. We all do have something we can do. So let's try to do our best every day. Amen. We're never we're not guaranteed how much our life physically. We're gonna we're spiritual and beings that have a soul that live forever. So we gotta do what we gotta do right here. The best we can. We we, we all sing short of the glory of God in our flesh. But we gotta we gotta we gotta do what Paul said to do on that. I Isaiah did. Amen. And and you know, have that innocence of David and Peter and his brother, you know, just don't forget Jude, amen, Judah, it, it was short for Jude, amen, they shortened it, um, God bless, shalom to you, keep on doing what you got to do, okay, it's going to be okay, God bless.